Someone asked, uh, Internet Ghost, who's a trailblazer, uh, how does Vivaldi factor into your recommendations for browsers if you have to place it on a Spectrum of Tor browser on one and in Chrome on the other? Where would it fall? That's a good question. I'll start and just say, I think it's definitely a lot closer to Chrome. The way I see Vivaldi myself is it doesn't have the kind of like privacy concerns of being from Google, of being a big tech company, of like collecting more data than it needs to collect. Um, I actually interviewed the Vivaldi CEO on the channel if you want to like look into what the kind of data Vivaldi collects. And they're a super great team, love the team, love the mission, love what they do. I think that just what Vivaldi does is they don't have the kind of privacy techniques and tools that are utilized by like more strictly privacy focused browsers like Brave or Bulvad browser. So I think that's what you're missing with Vivaldi browser. I say Vivaldi collects less data than Google Chrome would but you're missing out on some of those more sophisticated privacy tools that you're going to get on those more advanced browsers is my take on Vivaldi. Um, but it's a good browser. If you like it, then feel free to use it. I don't know if Jonah has a different take there. No, pretty much. But I would say the same thing. Um, it, this is why I don't really like these like one dimensional spectrums of like from the Tor browser or like threat modeling from high to low, which is that the, the reality is these things don't exist on the same spectrum. And like, especially Tor browser really solves a completely different problem than like something like Brave or Moldad browser, which I think might be more appropriate to have on the other end of a spectrum with Chrome. Um, uh, but I mean, as far as Vivaldi specifically, I don't really have anything to add. Um, I think I don't use it, so I can't, I can't really add more than that. <laughs> Yeah, I tried downloading it and I want to give it a shot again, but if, I don't know, if you listen to the, to what we do enough, you'll know that I'm a very like simple kind of guy in terms of the software I like. So if it's too much for me, I, I kind of just mentally check out very quickly and Vivaldi for me did land in that bucket, which is also why people love Vivaldi. Like the Vivaldi community is like diehard for Vivaldi. And I think it's really cool. So if you like Vivaldi, I know why you like it. And it's because it's just so customizable. You can make Vivaldi look like anything and pretty much do anything. And it's a super powerful browser. Um, and it seems like it has really cool features too. Like it has its own email client built in. Um, it has its own, I think it has its own RSS thing built in. Like you can pretty much do a lot of things in Vivaldi, but it was just too much for my brain. Um, same reason I don't like Obsidian. Same reason I didn't like... Um, What's that productivity tool? Notion. Oh my gosh. I, you know, every person talks about how Notion solves their life's problems. Oh my gosh, my life was such a mess and I got Notion. And then I'm like, I tried it out and I go, dude, it's a part-time job to just maintain this so it's usable. Um, and that's not even talking about the privacy concerns with Notion, which I very much don't enjoy either. Um, but I was just going to see it like maybe for like business tech lore stuff. Does this make sense? And man, it was a nightmare. Um, so... Yeah, sorry, I said to keep them short, but I had rants. <laughs> Thanks for watching TechLore Clips. This clip actually comes from our main channel, TechLore, where we talk about digital rights, privacy, security, how to have a little bit more ownership of your data, and also just your tech in general. So if you liked this clip and you want to see more of what we do, check us out at TechLore here on the screen.